In the previous video, I created this string dependency that was annotated with at provides. I didn't really explain how it worked or really anything about it. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And I'm also gonna refactor the code a bit and make things more organized. More specifically, I'm gonna show you how to create sub modules within a component. So inside the app component, for example, uh, we have kind of two modules, the Android support injection module and the activity builders module. The activity builders module is one that I built. This is the one that declares uh, auth activity as a potential client for injection. Uh, the Android support injections module is just one that I need to use Dagger basically. It contains some things that I need to use Dagger. You always will need to include this in your application level app component. But uh, so the activity builders module one is a lot more interesting. And uh, it's interesting because I created it and I declared uh, things inside of it. And uh, we can do this with more modules. So for example, I'm going to click on the DI package. I'm going to create a new class. I'm gonna call it, or what, no, I'll call it app module. <laughs> Forgot what I was doing there for a sec. So I'm creating a, a module that's going to be used inside of the application component. Now, just like the other module, I'm going to start by annotating it with at module. That lets Dagger know that this is a module class, but I'm not going to be uh, declaring this one as abstract. I'm not going to be doing that because inside this one, I'm not going to be using the at contributes Android injector like we did with, uh, with the uh, activity builders module. Inside this one, I'm going to put different dependencies. So, or so I'm going to put dependencies. So I'm cutting out that string dependency. I'm going into the app module and I'm going to paste this in here. This is where I'm going to put all of the application level dependencies for the project. So this is going to be like things like the retrofit instance, the glide instance, anything that's going to exist and not change for the entire lifetime of the application. Right now, I'm just going to have use this one string because uh, we're going to kind of add layers of complexity as we move on with the project. For right now, I just want to keep things as simple as possible. So now, uh, before we move on, I want to talk about the at provides annotation because I didn't really explain that in the last video. So the at provides annotation is used to declare a dependency, basically. So I'm saying here's a string dependency, uh, you know, create this dependency when a string is injected into an activity, basically. So this, and I'm using a, I'm using static here because that's what the documentation recommends. Using static on your uh, dependencies with the app provides annotation will be more efficient. That's what the documentation says. I personally don't know the difference. I don't know how to measure the difference, but no matter where you go, whether it's a blog post, Stack Overflow, or the actual documentation, it always says to use static if possible because it's more efficient. Uh, I'm assuming what it does is, is it uh, creates less code overhead The because it's at the end of the day, you're still generating code. I'm assuming that it somehow generates less code. That's what, I, that's what I'm guessing. But anyway, in general, use static. So there is our, uh, there's our first dependency and there's our, our secondary module. So now I'm gonna go into the app component and I'm going to add that module. So I'm gonna go app module, Dot class and I'm just adding it as I'm adding it to the list of modules. Now if I was to run the app, remember we have this injected dependency here. If I run the app, we should see everything working exactly how it was before. I should see the on create method get fired and uh, and that dependency being being called. So if I scroll down to the bottom, there is our test string still working exactly how it was before. So pretty cool. Uh, now we have kind of things refactored a little bit, a little bit more organized. Now inside here is where I'm going to only put uh, activity declarations. So the contributes Android injector, which we just have one of those. And then now inside this app module class, I can put all of the, the kind of the other dependencies that aren't related to activities. Uh, so before I move on, I want to just kind of refer back to the diagram. So notice that in the app component, in this kind of little subsection here, I have activity builders module, which we have built now. And so now you know what that is. We have the app module, which we just built. And then we have this other thing named view model factory module, which we haven't built yet. Uh, if you take a look at auth component here, we have auth module, 
uh, auth view models module. And inside main component, we have main module and then a couple others. The thing I want you to pay attention to here, the point I'm trying to make is notice the naming. So in the app component, I have the activity builders module, which is going to be all the activities. And then I have this other module named app module. So in the auth component, I have auth module in I say auth in the auth component, I have auth module in main component. I have main module. Just notice the naming here. These modules are unique to their particular component. So they will contain contain dependencies unique to those components. And that's what you should try and do with dagger when you're organizing your dependencies. The app component contains a class named app module where there's application level dependencies in the auth component. There's uh, an auth auth module and inside there there's authentication level dependencies and then main component is the same thing so just trying to basically separate things whenever possible and help keep everything really organized uh, just you know once again this this diagram is probably still mostly not going to make sense to you i just kind of want to keep referring back to this as we move along so that you kind of gain more and more knowledge uh, so now the next thing i want to talk about is how to reference other dependencies within the same module. I think I kind of said that poorly, but, uh, but that's okay. I'm going to create another dependency and uh, reference the application context. Uh, so I'm just gonna write it out and then I'm gonna talk about it because it's gonna be, it's kind of hard to explain. So static Boolean, I'm gonna call it get app. This, the name of this method does not matter. Uh, the thing I want you to notice is that I'm able to pass an application object as input and then I'm just going to return a Boolean. Uh, I'm gonna basically return uh, is, I'm gonna return the application, sorry, I keep stumbling over my words. If the application is null, this will return true. If that application object is not null, this will return false. So what I'm trying to show you here is that I have this application object available to me. And I have it available to me because if I go into my app component, I'm binding the application object when the app component is created. So because I've bound this application object, I can also access it inside of my modules. And that's how I can pass it as an input here. If I didn't do this, so if this was commented out, for example, if that was commented out and I ran the app and I tried to do this, this would return null. This application, this will, this Boolean would return true because the application object would be null. But because I've bound the application instance, the application object, at the time that the app component was constructed, I can use it inside of my modules that are inside the component. So because this, this module is inside the component, I can use that application object right here. And uh, just to kind of clarify, just to give you an, an, another example, if I was to do, you know, at provides static, uh, it really doesn't matter, uh, integer, sum, int, if I was to do string, string, uh, if string equals this string, so if I was to like literally put that in here, uh, return one, and if not, then return zero. Uh, it would return one because this string exists as a dependency inside this module. So by default, if I just pass this to the constructor, it will get passed to the constructor. So Dagger kind of just does this behind the scenes. And I know I know you have tons of questions like, why did I return integer here? Why did I return Boolean here? Um, you know, why did, uh, how does it know? What if there was a second string? Uh, you know, all of these questions I know you have, they will be answered by the end of the course. Right now, I don't want to uh, kind of bog down this video with a whole bunch of different concepts. So just for now, just focus on uh, the fact that this bind instance method or annotation can bind an object at the time that this is built, and I can use that object inside of the modules just like I'm doing right here. So now if I, just to kind of show you, I'm gonna go into the activity, go inject, uh, I'm going to inject uh, the Boolean, so Boolean, uh, is app null, I'll call it, and then I'm going to go down to the log, is app null question mark, and then I'm going to print that Boolean. So if that application object equals null, this will return true. Uh, so hopefully it's gonna return false. I'm, I'm claiming that this is gonna return false basically. So we're gonna see if I'm wrong. I'm gonna clear the log, 
and I, I cleared it too late. I got to run the app again. So that the log is clear. We should see the on create our string and then on create and it should print false. Uh, I don't know why it didn't. There we go. So this is our string and is the app null? No, it's not null. So that means that that application object is is available to us inside the module. And that's that's all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you that uh, using the bind instance method when the when the, the the component is constructed, the object that I pass to the constructor to the builder uh, will be available to us in the module, which is what we we just saw there. Now in the next video, I'm going to take this this concept of referencing uh, dependencies within the same module, so referencing multiple dependencies within the same module uh, to the next level and actually show you something practical. So what I'm going to be doing is like creating our glide instance, creating some drawable resources that we're actually going to be using in the application. So I'm going to stop using these kind of dummy examples that aren't real and I'm going to show you a real example of how you might do this. I uh, just wanted to kind of interject here. This is breaking the regular course flow for this course in this video. I just wanted to kind of quickly interject and ask you a favor. So for those of you who don't know, I make my living from making courses. I make online content and I have a membership on my website where I have premium courses available to my members. And uh, since I stopped making courses for Pluralsight, that's pretty much, much exclusively how I make my living. So that's how I literally pay my rent and I buy food and I keep existing. Um, so I wanted to just kind of take a second and ask you, if you get any value from my courses, to please go to my website, konugmich.com, and leave a testimonial. So just go to more, go to testimonials. Uh, if you if you want to leave a testimonial, all you got to do is create an account. It's free. It takes literally 30 seconds to do. And click on write a testimonial right here. And uh, this will pop up. You can leave a comment here saying, you know, like, Mitch helped me get a job or whatever. Uh, leave a rating. My mic is falling down. Um, leave a rating and submit that. And that uh, that would really help me. It helps me to everybody who writes a testimonial uh, is is another piece of proof that my stuff works and my videos work and you get jobs and you get better at being a developer. You build the app that you always wanted to build. All of these things. So if uh, you know if you get any value from my courses, from my from my videos, I would appreciate a testimonial. Thanks. Let's get back to the course.